morning. How are you? Good. Is the lighting yeah. okay? Dude, you look fantastic. It's like you've got a oh, halo that's, above your head. That's, yeah. That's a, that's a line of shit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I know. I did that. I did not do that purposefully, but now I'm going to say I did. That's okay. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There it is. <laughs> I got an idea. Good. I got an idea. <laughs> Um, just everybody right through the interview just doing he's, this uh, he's actually trying to set it up now so i was sitting right on his head hey, hey, hey. brilliant there the people will appreciate oh, there it. we go centered um <laughs> how are you we're very well we are very well thank you well i appreciate it i i'm going to admit i watched your reaction video to permanent rebellion nice um, nice yeah you did you, didn't you do one we did we did we did, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did uh 2022 as well yeah we did both. that's right yeah it was 2022 that's right yeah that's right uh you know the fact that you even took the time to listen to it but i appreciate like i just appreciate when everybody does like that because you get to see what somebody's reaction is on the spot you know and it's super honest and it's super right there and i like it yeah i love that it's a, it is a different era of music consumption from both like a artist standpoint because you get to literally watch the fans as they react to things yeah. but also from a like journalistic standpoint we found that it, it's so interesting now seeing people like at shows coming out and being like i saw the new track drop but i'm waiting to watch your video like people are waiting to see that's how they gauge their own taste in music now rather than like reading a magazine and being like it's four out of five stars for this so there's the plus sides to it and there's the downsides on our end but i mean there's like some way that i've kind of gotten used to it where i i try and embrace it more and understand that like you know it's it's all a matter of of, of who's doing it you could tell that you guys are putting a lot of thought into it and that you're actually fans of music you're actually giving deep thought to what you're hearing what it means um whether you like it or not it's honesty in what should have always been in reviews and stuff you know but a lot of journalists had pre you know what, what would be the right word they were exposed to certain things so they have like their own preconceived notion of what it's yeah. going to be yeah and, and you know when you're when you do a reaction they, you didn't sit there and listen to it five times already you know you you know that somebody's getting their you know their real opinion yeah That's well, it. so. and with the first reaction as well it, it, it's interesting so my my issue with you know, like the the traditional sense of journalism and, and written media and, and reviews and things like that is that you can literally only read the words. You can't take any interpretation from from their mood, from their vibe, from the mannerisms and 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 the the tones in their voices. You know what I mean? So you could read something and the guy and the guy might be saying, "Yeah, th this is pretty good," but it might sound like they're saying this is total shit. And yeah. whereas when you're watching a reaction, you it's not, just so, say, it's not so total shit. Yeah. It's not so black and white, you know what I mean? And the other thing is with the first reaction, like it's also the, the thing that gets me with us is it, it's difficult because you'll watch, like I'll watch a video for the first time and I'll be like, yeah, it was okay. And then I'll go back and listen to it and I'll get more from it. I'll be like, oh yeah. And then it'll grow on you because some music hits you straight away. Some grows on you. Some you watch the first time yeah. you go, that was sick. And then you never listen to it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why it's a, it's a cool, it's an interesting concept. It's one I back fully, you know, seeing people's actual first reaction to things. I, I love that. Yeah. I, I will admit, and this is not to blow smoke, but I have actually gone back and listened to the, the three singles you guys released so far quite heavily. Uh, you've killed it. It's, it's a really refreshing sound and it, it shows a bunch of very talented musicians just seemingly playing for passion which I think like comes across in the music, which is sick. Well, that's, that's, you're, you're nailing it. That's exactly what it is. Um, you know, uh, even the stuff that, so you can hear that we're like reaching out to each other, even though we were doing it through, you know, remote ways and stuff writing. But I mean, there were the times where we got together too. So it's a mixed batch, but I mean, the difference with this whole thing is it really was formed through uh the remote world through through the internet like you know there's a lot of bands you know counting other bands that were all in and stuff that did albums during this there's no doubt about that that people had to adapt to the remote and you know but we are dealing with us starting a new we started this band that way you know what i mean and 
what's cool about it is, is there's both, there's both elements of what we are as that band just remotely. And there's elements of when we got into the room and we're like, Oh, this vibes here too. What yeah, a relief. Cool. We yeah. love it. You know? Um, Does that, did that been, completely like, change when you guys got finally got in the room together? Did the songs that you had written remotely kind of just change and you just go, Oh, this is taking no, on a different it's, persona. It's so cool because a lot of them for the most part stayed the same. Um, a lot of them were, uh, we're pretty identical to the to the demos. It's just Will Yip brought, you know, the production to it. And, you know, there are some things like there's a song called Grifter that's on the record. And, um, you know, that one just started with a with a random like kind of kooky riff I had that was in drop D. And, you know, I kind of just sent it as a group of riffs. And, um, you know, while depending on who it came from, that's really how a lot of this stuff was for the most part. I mean, it could be Tim just sending some bass stuff around and uh, which was really cool and we can get back to that, but I've never really written to, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of songs on the album that were written. We wrote the, to the bass, you know, he just sent wow. a random bass part and we started writing guitars to that, you know, and sending, it's just who sends the canvas first is really the game. And then everybody just starts throwing paint at it. You know what I mean? That's a fun um, way of doing it. It was cool. It doesn't always work. We found a group of people that it works with. So this gets back to the original question is like, we got in the room, that vibe could have been missing. Yeah, Like yeah. it could have been like, oh, we're all around each other now. Now, and no, we started just as much creativity. I mean, we have a whole group of songs already. Some from when we were working on past lives but some from every time we've been together, you know, to rehearse or to get ready. You know, we did the bomb squad live at dreamland. Um, we did a session for that. And a majority of the time we'd be in between, you know, like we did a few takes of bomb squad itself, but we were working on all other stuff yeah. in between it and not the stuff for past lives. You know, we were working on new stuff. And so it's a constant creative flow. And, some of that might be honeymoon period, but I say, you know, <laughs> let it be then. Yeah, hell you know? yeah. Make the most of the honeymoon period. Embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> Get productive, baby. Let us keep fucking. <laughs> that's that's what I was trying <laughs> to say. I'm so I'm glad you go. I'm la- Shit, I might not dirty. Uh, you now, can say whatever you want, dude. Oh, <laughs> love it. We encourage well, the in group fucking. That. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no, if it's it, we're having a blast with it. You know, I haven't I, I'm I'm about to go out and do these shows with these guys. You actually caught me right now. I'm I'm packing my bag. I'm doing this. I'm headed to the airport. Um, you know, I found out that I could do this. I know you guys have already given time to this band and uh, you know, I can't thank you enough and I know the band feels that way. So, oh, we, we appreciate you. Over there. Dude, really, we, dude, we hope I you love can love as well. Man, we, we love, love that. Being over there. We've been like fans of of all the bands that you know you guys are in for so long. So it, it's really cool for us to see you know so many bands that we've listened to for years and years and years, like take members and, and create something so cool. And I've always wondered when you you know like you guys have all been in well established bands. How how is it you know personally for you like starting over and going into a new environment you know and do you kind of have to unlearn? all of your your previous experiences or do you just kind of go with the flow um well in with the album itself while it was going with the flow it was sending each other what stuff we were feeling at that point like i said there was a constant flow of music um you know and and it wasn't for anybody like i could send like three riffs and everybody only starts fucking with the one you know yeah. and i'm not gonna go well you didn't like those other two you know it was there was so much flow that nobody could like be uh you know i guess the best word frank uses this word a lot precious about anything it was more um it was more being uh just excited that there were so much to work on you know and it was what you drifted to because there was no shortage right yeah. so if if everybody wasn't messing with the one thing i mean i became an addiction too because it was like if nobody messed with the one thing that was sent what be it like a baseline Tim sent, you know, or, or Frank sent a riff or I sent a riff. Then I would just look, you know, I would look for the last thing sent that was the most fleshed out and work on that and add my guitars to that. It was kind of like, what is in here to work on right now? You know, like, all right, nobody's added to this thing yet, but what else is there? Oh, wow. You know, Frank put these guitars down to this thing Tim sent, 
I'm going to add some guitars, you know, Oh, Tucker played to this thing that I sent. Well, maybe, you know, it's just, it was, it was really cool. Um, so, and that happens when we get in the room together too. How I'm sorry you, if I went off. Did no, I no, off? You answered it. That's, what, that's what people want, man. We want you to go off. Please do. Oh, okay. How? Yeah, it was, it was like, this? It's, it's more the difference. What, what was that? Well, like um, you said, like you guys seem to have like a very genuine, like, oh, cool. You did this. Now I want to do this. Where's the, where's the foundation from that? Like, why, why are these members? Why now? What, what led to that? Cause that, that's a, it is a very interesting thing. It's just like friendships. I mean, like, Hey, we could maybe hang out and jam sometime or. It's very rare that this happens. Like, you know, I mean, we know that we, we tried something where we all agreed and it was all through sending texts and, and, and stuff like, you know, that we were like, Hey, let's all agree that if this sucks, we'll just stop. Well, it didn't suck. And it had this energy. So everybody just kept sending stuff back and forth. And then it kind of became a lifeline. Like, yeah, cool. you know, the Coed record was pretty much done. That was all, you know, it was like, um, I think that, yeah, like we were preparing to do shows in certain ways, but we're all creative and we wanted to keep mm. being creative. And I wanted so bad to be creative. And, um, so like we just kept working on it and um and then you know i know that i know i just know that we all had this same feeling of we needed something to to help us feel you know like an outlet i don't know, feel fucking alive when you never knew what was going to come next and yeah. like i said there's a lot of bands that had to do that but we created this through that we found something that's very rare. Yeah, we've toured together and all respect each other as musicians and said, hey, maybe we'll do something someday. I'd always imagined that I could be in a band with Tucker. I always wanted to be, but I didn't. Did I really think it could happen? Yeah. No, because it's so rare that it comes together. Yeah, You absolutely. know, like when everybody has, you know, successful things that they're doing, you know, and it ebbs and flows with this, you know, you say success. Well, what does that really mean? To me, that just means that people appreciate the music and, and actually like react to it. Back to the whole reaction thing. You know, <laughs> when people care to like even give it a shot. So we're all lucky. We've been part of these things where people care to do that. And um, and it's it's rare that that bands, you know, that have members that have already been a part of that can get together and really make it happen without ego i guess and without yeah. um and without the hang-ups of well this is usually how i play yeah no i usually play the lead i love when i send like a rhythm kind of thing and then frank writes some leads i love when i write some kooky leads to something tim sends and then frank writes a lead on top of that and somehow that still works i mean you know in in the other musical you know life i have like clearly there's no boundaries in that world either so yeah. i'm open to that but yeah, i'm also absolutely. open if everybody sends something and it is more restricted and has more boundaries i think shit i think that certain ways sometimes there was just an unspoken thing of like you know let's just make this catchy and we don't even say that it's just the parts we send to each other to me made it catchy you know yeah, okay i just feel like we found a communication we're lucky for it um in a rare uh occurrence we found it also through uh sending stuff online you know because without the communication like that's hard to find you know and in the middle of the pandemic we still found that and formed something we've spoken know? to a few um, people that in the last few years like the pandemic while it was such a shit thing it was such a hard part for creatives i feel like it actually was the start of something fresh for so many people like you said, you were looking for someone and it gave you uh, that timing to go and do the thing. You're like, oh, I wish that we could do this or maybe something would happen. All of a sudden, this global thing that affected everyone in a pretty negative way actually offered the opportunity and the the catalyst for you to start something like that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I could be really simple about it too. Like, I think that what we all gave each other was a place to come and, and feel good, better about ourselves. Yeah. creatively musically with without the um pressures and expectations or you know anything that from our prior worlds 
It was everybody wanted to be a cheerleader for each other because we all kind of understand that we've been part of things for many years in, in, in other, in our other worlds yeah. that we could come together and basically almost be a therapeutic, a sonic therapeutic session where we can, you know, exercise some of our feelings like, you know, and be able to do things without, anybody saying ah, you shouldn't do that that's not really going to work here yeah i think the yeah. pandemic would have been the perfect time for that as well because i don't think necessarily going back into you know like for you like that that coheed thing would have necessarily been it would, might not have had the same positive impact that starting something new with new people it gives you like this new excitement new challenges you know what i mean so it's it, it probably would have Maybe, maybe you know doing more with coheed over the over the pandemic wouldn't have been as therapeutic as, as starting this thing um well i mean interesting... I, you know we finished the the the, the record that coheed finished vaxes too was done during the pandemic and it's magical that that happened and to me i get to play on two of the best records this year so you um, know and also congratulations on that album man like it blows me away that you guys still just can continuously release right, the, that, the catchiest so shit in the year like it's amazing the the key was in what you just said i didn't want you to like i didn't want to lose that still can it's like how lucky are we all when it comes to all of us in ls dunes but you know because we're right now even if we're talking about coheed but you could be talking about my cam you could be talking about thursday you could be talking about you know even though circa has decided to be on a hiatus the numerous things that anthony gets involved in we all have a still can yeah. going on and on top of it, we create this thing that's a very real band that's very real to us and not just some side shit that also everybody's given us that still can by even you guys wanting to talk to me. You know, it's like, holy shit, how lucky are we? And that's how I feel, you know, like Coheed Record comes out. A lot of people, you know, we're over the moon and love it. There's a still can, you know, Hell yeah. You're, I'm here talking to you about past lives. And I am so glad it's finally coming out because I can say to somebody, hey, here's an album I played on that I am fucking really proud of. And instead of saying, well, I don't know if I could share the link with you. <laughs> now I can actually, you know, <laughs> That'd like, be a bit awkward. Yeah. I've been, yeah. Talking, I've been talking about past lives for like, you know, a year and just saying, well, I don't know if I should share the link, you know? Yeah. Finally. So, yeah. Yeah, it's cool to be able to finally have that cathartic release of this thing you've been building on for so long i wanted to go back to something you, you touched on a few minutes ago where you were talking about the the lack of pressure here and i find that so interesting because as you just kind of said you've all come from these hugely successful bands you've got careers that aren't old careers they're still existent successful big things was there any pressure within yourself to be like oh what if people don't like get involved with this in the same way as they did with Coheed or with Thursday or with any of the other bands going on. Like, was there pressure there? Or was that something that you were just doing it for you? And that was what was I wouldn't point? call it pressure. I mean, do, do you make art or even you guys creating this, like, you know, pot, you know, I mean, you, the podcast is not what you'd call it, I guess. Video yeah, cast, close enough. You know, <laughs> yeah. Video cast. Like when, when you do, you know, anything that is creative and artistic and entertaining if you find out nobody's entertained by it you're like well that kind of sucks you yeah. know uh so that's always there no matter what but my expectation i mean shit when we did our first show at riot fest for you know the first ls dunes appearance i was like god i hope there's at least like 100 people here and then it's thousands of people you know yeah, and so I don't, I'm glad that I have these low and like no expectation like that. And I think we all can agree because I don't want to be a pampered motherfucker because I'm lucky enough to be in all these other things that people, you know, yeah. have actually listened to and care about. Yeah. I'm lucky that that happened in the first place. So I get involved, you know, in this with, with all these guys that also are part of it. And it's a relief to me. I think that's why we also connect so much because none of us have that expectation kind of thing. Well, because I'm part of this. Don't yeah. you worry, fellas. Yeah. Don't you worry. Mr. Big's coming tonight because I'm part of it. No, man. It's like, 
you never know what's going to come up the pipe, you know, like, yeah, I've seen some really, I'm trying to, you know, be hesitant with, but I've seen some really great reviews of past lives, but do I expect that there'll be a few people that are like, yeah, I don't know. Yes, of course. That's part of it. But I think the, the cool thing with you guys that was though, like when we looked at the, the personnel listing, it wasn't like, you know, like say for instance, for an example, when fucking audio slaves start, it's like, oh, you've got the guys from Rage Against the Machine as the musicians and Chris Cornell at the vocalist. I can kind of vibe what this is going to sound like. It's going to, you know, kind of sound like a, a more rock and roll version of Rage Against the Machine with a more rock and yeah. roll vocalist. Seeing the personnel from you guys, even though you're all kind of in the same scene to some extent, I had no idea what it would sound like because it's all completely different dudes from completely different bands. And that's the most exciting thing. I like that. And I think that we all agreed that we want it to be that way. And we still want, you know, we'll create, and we have other song ideas that I think are still going to be, you know, we'll have our sound just like every other band that we're in had, you know, eventually got a theme and the sound and, but I mean, I think all the bands were in, there's the elements that you can hear, but everybody's always experimented with different things. And the same will go for Ellis Dunes. Yeah. So there'll be things that we'll develop and have already in certain new song ideas that we have that I'm like, wow, this this will be kind of left field for some people. But you know what? I, I hope that uh I hope that they're ready for the ride because that's that's what we want to do. And it's it's without expectation because that what you just described is somebody not knowing how to expect it that's that's kind of what this built this was built without expectation so hey it's cool that the listener doesn't know what to expect either you know yeah, sure. um, and even when hearing it it's like geez i didn't expect that <laughs> yeah well you know fuck I mean? yeah and, and and that's kind of why like <laughs> let me just explain it here hot off the press like hot off the press i haven't been able to i was thinking the other day why a lot of people you know it's gotten to the point also where sometimes I think people think we're being like, you know, um, a little bit, I, I don't know what the right word to say is, but like, you know, we're being fussy about saying, well, we don't like being called a super group. I tell you why I don't like it. And I won't speak for anybody else, but it really gives this expectation mm. um, and makes it so that like, it's almost like we've wronged you because you know who we are from something else. We've wronged you by you not getting what you expected out of the music, where everybody has been building it up in their own way, thankfully, uh, that this band exists and that this record exists. But if they don't like it and they're like some super group, it, it's like, you're the one who called us that, you know? Yeah. Never, <laughs> we got together as a band to make music, you know? Yeah. You're giving us like it's almost like an invitation for trolling. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the soundbite. So, We're so not a super group. Just like, what's that? That's your soundbite right there. We're not a super group. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not a super group because we we're not trying to throw that at people. We're not yeah. trying to say, hey, just because of like we made music together because we fucking tried it and it worked, and we can't stop because we love making it together. Yeah. So it wasn't some like, hey, you got an extra cape, you know, like it's not <laughs> like, fucking, hey, anybody got another set of superhero boots? Cause I was just hoping to see you in spandex, to be honest. Anthony's That's... coming over. Oh, you don't want to see that right now. <laughs> working on it, working on it. But anyway, you know, so it's like, it's just one of those things where nobody's being like a fussy, you know, fussy Precious. Nelly. Nobody's being, uh, you know, about like, cool, I appreciate that you think that we're all like some, you know, super group thing, but you're the one throwing that at us. And it invites all these, you know, people to troll us and say, I don't think that you get all these people that go, how come they saying this is a super group? These aren't even the most popular people in their band. You know, you get these oh, people like, on. and it's like, <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Like, you know, the ironic thing about that. If either of you left your respective bands and someone replaced you, they'd be saying it's not the same anymore. Oh yeah, I know. It's like you know, it's so funny. But that's how that's how people. Then you go back to like, hey, you could complain about shit like that, 
but then you're in the position that that stuff's actually happening. So it's like, all right, choose your battles. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it's hard because like, we've had all these different journalists, you know, that's like the headline. It's either super group or don't call them a super group. And I'm like, Oh, now it's making us look like the jackasses who are like, don't call us that. And it's not like, hopefully I've explained it kind of well here, you know, like, cause I'll, I, I'd like it to be explained without it sounding pompous. You know, because yeah, because it looks it almost looks like that a little bit when people see a headline that says don't call them supergroup. It's like, mm. no, it's not like we're not honored that somebody thought that, but there's gonna be countless people that don't think that. So yeah. we're a sort of super group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's gonna be countless people that don't think that, like we don't think that. We are a band, you yeah. know. Yeah, like, that's it. And so you guys would have known like we're a band and we make music that we love together. So why, you know, you're putting pressure on us too. Well, you guys would have known more than anyone after years of being in the music industry, like just because you all have successful bands coming together, there was going to probably be more expectation from a lot of people. And you guys more than anyone would have known that you still had to start from the ground and build this thing up and earn fans and, and, you know, earn their understanding of your music. Quite honestly, I'm blown out. I'm blown away. I'm blown out. That didn't sound too good. I'm blown. I'm blown away that that, that it's like uh, it's it's as much as it is. I yeah. really am, and I'm not kidding. Like that, it's like holy shit. Like you know, I think that everybody is. We're like, wow, we did this because we love it, and here we are. You know, well, you know, I'm able to talk to you, and I'm able to talk to people that actually are like, well, it is. You know. They like it. And yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. When you guys first started the conversation, you first started the text, you were sharing stuff across. Was there any like vision for what you wanted the sound to be for the band? Or was it just let's get together and yes. riff it out and see what happens? I sent I sent what became a song called Antibodies as a, a group of riffs. Um Tim said, uh, Tim reminded me the other day that it was kind of arranged. I know that they added once they were in Will's studio. Um, he and Anthony, or no, I think we added a bridge together in pre-production, but uh, he said most of the song was there and the riffs I sent, but I do remember being excited by that aspect of sending a bunch of stuff and already getting Tucker's drums back. Then all of a sudden there's Tim and there's Frank, you know, and it was like, and Frank sent an idea and I sent some guitars and, you know, same thing, went down the line, Tucker has drums on it. Tim's on bass and everybody just being so excited that yeah. with just these first couple of ideas, anybody's being the most flash fleshed out. And the first one that, you know, I, I don't know if you know the story yet, um, but Anthony was, you know, pretty much like our choice before we even knew that he approached Tucker. But when Tucker told us that he had approached him about, you know, doing some vocals, I was like, well, how are we going to try it, you know? And, and we decided just for the hell of it to see where he was at by sending him, and it was antibodies, um, the demo, sending him that and saying, and Tucker said it was some of his friends from town. And so oh, Anthony was like, Anthony was like, wow, you got some, it's cool. Cause that, that he said this, he was like, wow, you got some, some, you know, some talented neighbors or some shit like that. And, and so he sent these vocals and it was like, oh, that's it. It's him, you know? Yeah. And, that was the first song that's like the first song when we discuss it that's the first song i sent out riff wise and that's the first song that had vocals um and then the sound like i said some songs were sent just bass and we wrote off that uh permanent rebellion was a riff that frank had on the last minute of the first day of pre-production last minute of that day he had the guitar riff and i was recording guitars in the other room and i could kind of hear the riff and um, and everybody was like, what is that? They started building the song. And then I got involved and got some ideas on guitar. I think that I went back and wrote a lot of my guitar parts just in my little studio here in Nyack. And that's what became Permanent Rebellion. And all these things are then handed. So you ask how it was, you know, how the sound is kind of, you know, uh, where the foundation's coming from. Well, what's interesting about it is the foundation for a lot of these songs came later when Anthony wrote his vocals to it. Yeah, and right. it was, cool. he was adapting to songs that we had already built and writing melodies and lyrics, which he did amazingly. 
which had its own vibe. Mm. But then you take a song like, oh no, I lost you for a second. You take a song, um, you know, like uh, a Brifter, which was a group of riffs and he did, they took, he and Will took the chorus and turned that into a bridge and the bridge into a chorus. Yeah, right. Oh, and wow. arranged it that way. So there was that nudging. But that's why I can't wait to get back in the room with the guys because we're doing stuff the other day and we just start riffing, riffing on new things. And it's like, I can't wait to build it that way more. That's a, you know? it's, yeah. it's, so, it, it's, it's genuinely so cool to see like how excited you are by this project, man. Like you, you can kind of like, I mean, from the, from the outsider's perspective, I think a lot of people could kind of think that bands, when they've had like a lot of success, they kind of not, not get sort of complacent or, you know, don't appreciate it but it just becomes the norm so i think it's really cool to see someone so far into their career just so pumped on something new it's it's really refreshing really cool yeah no i appreciate that you can see that even off um, the back of as you said like vaxxas 2 is such a fucking strong so album good, <laughs> like I, I was like i've been jamming that so much when you guys released it and was so oh. pumped on it being like this sort of new wave of coheed kind of pun intended the, yeah. I, I was like good way to describe it yeah for sure the, to have that passion for something when you've just released <laughs> something so big and, and successful is yeah it's astounding and it, it shows one probably the, the depths of your creativity you just I know you didn't want to be a super group but I see some super, <laughs> superhero powers going on there of riftastic abilities I appreciate it Johnny I, you know I, I don't know like it it, it, it feels good I think for me personally, it's more the expectation of hearing that word and thinking, God, well, you're doing that it's, as opposed to not being honored that people think that. And so, yeah. like I said, I, I I don't want people to go, oh, they're, they're being so particular about that word. I mean, it's, it's fucking amazing that people want to call the band that, you know, but yeah, it's a real thing too, so... I feel like you've no. earned it. You've all, irrespectively with your own bands, earned the title of that. Yeah. If you were in a band that's been around for two years and then you had a, some moderate success, but like fucking how many co-hit albums are you in now? I think you've earned your stripes. I think everyone has in the band. I so how many it is. Is it 11? Let's just count it. It's a hot damn. It's a lot. Yeah. 11 or 12. Uh, that's just two. Oh, no, no. Now I'm going to be. Yeah. I think it's 11 or 12. I would have to look. I would have oh, to look. Man. Uh, okay. excuse me for a second i've got to check this because i remember hearing delirium trigger like when that album first came out man. i could do the old count on the hands you got seconds you got second stage you got in keeping you got good apollo one no world for tomorrow you got uh you're the black rainbow then there's after man after man i consider one record and then you got uh color before the sun Back is one back. It's nine records. It's only nine records. Oh, is that all? Oh, only nine. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, but I mean, I said 11. What did I say? 11 or 12? Hey, well, you did live, say you count tours. What? Yeah, that's, and then just countless tours and yeah, yeah 100%. And I just, I just noticed as well when I was having a quick look on Spotify, going back to uh, Second Stage Turbine Blade, it's like the 20th anniversary of that this year. It was, and we celebrated that a lot. But we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of In Keeping Secrets, actually. That'll be next year. So that's oh, yeah. Bring it to Australia. Yeah, bring it to Australia, please. Thank you. Well, yeah, we'd love to. You know, honestly, we did do an In Keeping Secrets tour, and it this makes me feel much older because it doesn't feel like that long ago. But on the 10-year anniversary of In Keeping, we did a full-blown tour of In Keeping. But... Um, I have a feeling there'll be a lot of celebration still of in keeping because 20 years is a big milestone. That's you know? huge. Huge so. for an for a huge album. Like it's a very well earned. I feel like yeah, it's a seminal album in there. Yeah, I'm saying, I kind of just the band that got me into you guys. I was, I was as an older younger. guy. I appreciate you guys saying that. It's an interesting as as an older I heard like a section of, of a song the other day and I was like I kind of remembered a lot and I was just like, wow, like didn't really understand what was going on at that point. Didn't have much confidence as a musician, but I just was willing to play whatever I could and That's try it. everything. You know, but um, it's interesting that now as an older person to say, oh, well, we did okay for, you know, the, the we were kids, you know. We did, we did what we were set out to do. 
you know? Hell yeah. At cool. that point, um, at that point, we ain't dead yet. None of us. Yeah. And that's why with past lives and, you know, everything we got going on, I, I, I just couldn't be more excited. I'm so lucky, you know? I, we don't want to do this, but is tomorrow night's the first night we get to play a full set. So hell oh, yeah, dude, that's so exciting. I yeah. had a question on the back of past lives, and we don't normally like ask like where the titles come from and name stuff. But is past lives a reference to you've all got past lives in previous bands, and that's where this has come from? Kind of. It's 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 uh, multi uh, layered. You know, it was like actually an onion. An op- it was an option for a name, which also what you just said was part of you know exploring that option it was kind of like this works on many levels our past lives in the bands our past lives of being together on tours you know uh even just on a deeper level our past lives you know musically just for all of us internally there's just numerous different reasons but now it worked so well there's another side it works so well and i haven't even told the other guys about this but that i consider to work so well is because when we recorded a lot of this uh it does think about how the pandemic feel and how we're kind of back now in the world Mm, that feels like a life in itself you know Um, so that's that's my newest take on it that that gives it even another layer for me it's like you know this album's always going to be something i am the most proud of in my life because of where it came from too and how you know and how it was in this other way of life you know well we know you're a busy man we'll let you get going shortly uh you well, back and go out there and <laughs> celebrate the record you know that we've been talking about, so but uh before you go down. we're gonna ask you a couple of would you rathers right they're very important questions for the channel okay my son i ask these all the time now too yeah let's do it <laughs> i don't know if he would have asked these ones every no, day every day for the rest of your life for your future life you have to wake up with one of these two songs it's your it's your wake up your alarm tone every single day. You've got photographed by Creed or Nickelback. arms wide. Yep, well they are double <laughs> photographed by Nickelback or with arms wide open by Creed. Which one do you wake up with every day for the rest of your life? I just would do photograph just because I would at least figure I have the comic relief of every time the giant head thing and is that, <laughs> look at what, what the hell's on Johnny's head? Is that what he says? Yeah, look at Photograph, yeah, I would, I would go with that. God, you know, I thought you were going to say photograph by Def Leppard, and I was going to be like, "What the fuck's the problem with that?" Yeah, but Jesus, uh, <laughs> no, no, we're not so making them easy for you. Yeah. That was a tough one, and no disrespect, because thousands upon thousands of hundreds of thousands of people would kill to have that as their everyday song. But hundred percent, yeah, yeah. All right, now the last one. This is the big one, the divisive one. All right, you've got to go on stage. All right, LS Dunes at a headlining download festival or something. All right, you've got a two hour set to do. You got to go on stage, you're perfectly warm and dry. You've got to put on either cold, wet socks or cold, wet underwear to do the set. What do you choose and why? You know, I would go with the cold, wet socks because I would like think that maybe I'm going to have a lot of foot sweat anyway. You're absolutely right. Socks I mean, is the correct I'm choice. Sweat, I am going to have ass sweat or ball sweat. Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to deal with that foot sweat. I'd rather have that than yeah. feel like my, my uh, you know, my nethers are leaking. I'd rather <laughs> feel like, I'd rather feel like either, you know, I don't want to feel like the genitals or the, the exit is leaking anything, you know. So, 100%. Feel like sweaty socks dancing, you know. Dude, I'm 40 fun. years old. I'm paranoid that every day that's just around the corner for me. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm 30. So, no, I'm just kidding. You look great. To- you look fantastic. <laughs> my, birthday's in, my birthday's in coming up. I'm we're playing in Asbury Park, LS Dunes on my birthday. So, oh, um, yeah, man. Well, happy birthday. Yeah. We were doing like these videos for it, and uh, because it's like you know, uh, going into you know. I'm not the middle of 40s yet, but if you get me, I'm right there. Um, <laughs> I'm 44. What am I going to do? I'm going to be 44. So I'm like, shit. You know, everybody's talking. We, we each chose a place to talk about, like, where, where a city we're playing to do a little video. 
And I was like, I could say it's my birthday. Nah, I'm not gonna bring attention Just to that. Just prove it. Really fun, but uh, but yeah. I had a birthday I'm a last year. On my yeah. birthday. All right, well, so. thank you so much, man. Like, um, congratulations on on obviously like an incredible career with Coheed. Congratulations on Ellis Dunes. It, it's it's really really good stuff, and we're pumped to hear the album. And yeah, honestly, hopefully you guys can get that band over here. That'd be fucking amazing, dude. I, I mean, I stay in touch, and you know, like uh, hopefully we do, and then we can meet up and we could do like a live thing of these, and you know, with That's some good. hang, yeah. I'll be watching you guys. I appreciate it. I'm I'm a fan. So thank you very much for everything. All right. Thanks Thanks so much, dude. Good luck with the show. Peace.